everyone and welcome back. This is Mindy with Mindy Egan Design and in today's video I'm going to be showing you a few different cards using supplies from the My Monthly Hero Kit. The kit and the add-ons is what I'll be using today and we will be starting by creating these first set of cards. Now the first stamp sets that I'll be using are actually add-ons. This is the Bug Collection stamp set. It's a 6x6 red rubber stamp and also the color layering moth. I really loved the layering on this and I just thought this moth was really beautiful. So we are going to start by stamping this out first. Now in this case, for me personally, it's very handy to have my Misty stamping tool because I'm going to start by doing the outline of the moth. I'm just doing this on some white cardstock and I'll actually be stamping it twice. So starting with the outline, and at the bottom of my card, I'm going to stamp this in the intensified black ink from Hero Arts. And then I'm also going to flip my paper. So I'll stamp two of them. Uh, reason being is just in case I line up the layers incorrectly on one, I can fix it for another so I don't have to dig all of my layers back out. Then once I have that stamped. I'm just doing it twice to make sure I have a really nice good outline. I will work on the next layer and these line up really great. They don't overlap each other so you can really have fun with the colors. So once I have that first layer lined up I am going to stamp this in the forest ink. Now these little ink cubes are one that I had gotten in previous kits so if you don't find it listed below in my supply section, you can always find something comparable or use what you have on hand. Then after I cleaned my stamp set really well, I'm going to stamp this in blue raspberry. So I'm using my reactive inks, which are really nice vibrant colors. And I actually really loved how this one came out because it's so bright. So then moving on to my second layer, lining that up making sure that I just have everything cleaned off really well so I don't have any smudgy fingerprints anywhere. And then I'm going to stamp this in Pool Party ink. And this is another reactive ink from Hero Arts. So these not only blend really well as far as ink blending, they also stamp really well in their vibrant colors. And that one I didn't stamp twice because I didn't want it to... Uh, get lost with the blue raspberry. So then I cleaned that really well, flipped my cardstock, and I'm stamping that second layer in lime green. And then I can come in and do my third layer. And I will be stamping this in dusty blue. So it adds a little bit of contrast to my moth. And then I'll clean that off really well. And when I flip my cardstock to work on my blue moth, I'm going to stamp that in Thistle Reactive Ink. Now I wanted to add a little bit of sparkle to my moths. So what I'm going to do is just prep my cardstock with an anti-static powder tool. And then I'm going to stamp that last section, so my last layer there, I'm going to stamp it in the embossing ink. And I'll flip the cardstock and do the other one as well. And I'm going to sprinkle on some sparkle embossing powder. This is one of my favorite embossing powders from Hero Arts just because it is such a beautiful sparkle to it. It's clear, so it's just going to really highlight the color. Now, I did notice that my ink was still kind of wet from the previous layers, so some of that embossing powder stuck to that. And when I heat embossed it, it really brought out that last color. So I'm going to fix that here in a little bit because it was kind of bothering me that that last color was standing out so much compared to the other layers. But first I'll go ahead and I'm using the coordinating die to die cut out my moths. And so here are those two and here's my trick what I'm going to do. I flipped my negative piece over and I'm lining my moths back in there holding that in place with some purple tape. And then I'm going to take my embossing ink and I'm going to ink up the entire moth. So I'm going to emboss the whole moth with the sparkle embossing powder. So just using that negative piece 
and the embossing ink and just squishing that down all over both of the areas. And then I could sprinkle on that sparkle embossing powder. And what'll happen when I heat set this, you'll see it, is it's really gonna make that whole thing pop. It's really gonna bring out the colors in both of those. And I actually have a third card that I had created ahead of time and you'll be able to see the difference when you add that. So you could even add clear embossing ink over the whole thing if you really wanted to bring those colors out. So once I had heat, that, heat set that, I'll just carefully remove those from the negative piece. And so here's a closer look. You can see it's really bright. It has that sparkle in there and it's nice and shiny. That is the moth I stamped in the reactive inks. And then here's the one I had stamped in the regular inks. Now for my background, I'm pairing this moth with the Bug Collection stamp set. So this is a six by six red rubber stamp. And I personally like to use my Misty tool. You certainly don't have to, uh, but I personally like to, and you'll see why in a few minutes. But because it is a red rubber stamp, you need to remove the foam insert from your Misty tool. I am going to stamp this onto craft cardstock, and this is measuring four and a quarter by five and a half. So I lined my cardstock up into my Misty, lined up my stamp, and just making sure my cardstock is straight in there. And now I'm going to use cocoa ink. This is another ink that I had received in a previous kit. And I'm taking that and I'm just gonna ink up the entire background, uh, only going so far as I need to because my cardstock isn't as big as the stamp set. So once that is inked up really well, I can close the door of my Misty and I'll stamp that down. And just making sure to give it really good pressure over the entire image so that the whole thing stamps down. And then there we have our background. Now I am doing another one because that was really dark. That was darker than I had anticipated it to be. So this time I'm using sandstone and I'm going to do the same thing. And since I had uh, two moths cut out, this is going to work great. I can use the background for each one and just making sure to give that good pressure everywhere. I can stamp that down. And now you can see this is one of the reasons I love using my Misty is I did not give it enough pressure in that certain area. So I just re-inked that and pushed it down where I needed it to. And so this is a softer background. And I loved this stamp because it reminded me of the bug collections that we used to do in school, which I think I still may have at my mom's. So that that's what piqued my interest on this stamp set. Now I'm doing a sentiment. And my original idea here, which I'll show you, is that I wanted to stamp this in black ink. Uh, I was a little nervous that it wasn't going to show up very well, but I was still giving it a try. I can always cover it up if I didn't like it. I did stamp it twice, and as I suspected, it kind of got lost on that background. The background was pretty busy, and using the cocoa ink, it was really dark. I'm gonna try it on the one I had created with the sandstone. It was a little better, but not by much. So to fix that, I stamped the sentiment onto white cardstock and just trimmed that down. So I'll attach these strips right onto the front of my card. I'll do that for both of them. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna attach foam squares behind my moths. So that'll give it some dimension. And once I remove the backing, I'll use my tweezers to just place that over and kind of hide that edge of my sentiment strip. Now I'll also show you a card I had created previously and I had used the sandstone ink and after a while that background kind of, it did lighten up a little bit. So here are the two cards we made in the video and then here is the card that I had made previously and you can see how that's a really lighter background and look at the difference of the moth. This one I did not put that sparkle embossing powder on. So you can see how much that embossing powder really brings out those colors. So there is a look at our two cards. And now we're going to make more of a Halloween type of background, which this I really loved. I'm a huge fan of Halloween. So I was really excited to make this card. 
and I am going to start off by doing some ink blending. So I'm working on a waffle flower media mat, which I've been really liking for ink blending lately because it's a silicone mat and it holds my cardstock in place. It's not moving all over while I'm ink blending. I'm starting off with Key Lime Fizz. This is a reactive ink, so it's going to react with water. And using my life-changing brushes from Pick a Fence Studios, I just added that lime green fizz into the center and then I'm going around all of the edges with the blue raspberry. And this is a beautiful, beautiful combination, especially for Halloween. It's really going to glow. And then just protecting my fingertips and my cardstock with a post-it note, I'll go around the entire edge, blending into that key lime fizz. And you can always go back in with some more key lime if you wanted to brighten that up and bring that color out just a little bit more. And then after I clean up my work surface, I'm just taking some clean water in a spritz bottle. I'm going to spritz that onto my cardstock. Let that sit for just a second. And you could already see how it's reacting with the ink. And it's going to leave uh, kind of some blotchy spots, with, which I think just really adds interest to my background. And now I'm going to do some quick die cutting. This is the spider web window. You can see it comes with an oval to cut it out so you could have it on its own or as a window right in your cardstock, which is what I'm going to do. So using the pitch black cardstock, lining up my spider web window, and I'll run that through my die cut machine. And I'm gonna layer this on top of my ink blended background, which happy fingers, I just love how this looks. It's so Halloween-ish. I just was really happy with it. So off screen, I did go ahead and stamp and color some images. And I also die cut a sentiment. The Happy Halloween is a die cut word that is from the actual kit. And I die cut that out of Pixie Dust cardstock, which is a white glitter cardstock. The cat is from the IC Crafting stamp set. And then the potion bottles are from Pure Magic stamp set, which those two are both add-ons that you can get. And I just thought the potion bottles looked really cool and the black cat. So I'll attach my spider web panel, just using a tape runner around all the edges and putting that right on top of my ink blended background. I didn't add any adhesive to the spider web. I kind of wish I would have added just a little bit. Uh, just kind of tack that down a little, but it'll be fine. I'm adding liquid glue to my Happy Halloween. It does kind of get lost with the webbing. But I still really liked it. I just, I needed a sentiment. I needed something here. And I really wanted to incorporate the Happy Halloween. And then I'm going to line up my images at the bottom of my card. Just kind of finding a place for each of them. And once I'm happy with where everything is, I will start attaching. And I'm just going to use some liquid glue starting with the bottles that are furthest in the back. And then layering some on top of those. So my black cat will be in the center. And since it is in the center, I'm going to add a few black foam squares to it to pop that up just a little bit. So really excited for how this one turned out. I love that glowing background back there. And I'll also be using this same color combination of ink blending for another card that we're going to do next. So there is a look at my first Halloween card using items from the kit and also the add-ons. And that background just glows, just loving it. And now on to my last card, which is a little more work intensive, but this is what really drew me into the kit are these peekaboo drawers. So here's a look at the stamp set you're getting in the kit. It's uh, the stamp set of the peekaboo drawers and a bunch of different add-ons in it, little small stamps and sentiments. Here is the peekaboo drawers die and a couple sentiments that you also get in the kit. And then I'll show you the card that you actually get in your kit and it tells you everything that you can get in it. You're getting card stock and some silk ink. You're also getting sheets of some uh, card stock and charms. I didn't use most of it. I just had this one idea in my head I really wanted to follow through on, but there is a ton of product in the kit itself. So I just wanted to give you a look at that. Now what I found easiest, I did play with this a couple different ways. 
And what I found easiest was die cutting my cardstock first. So just using some pitch black cardstock, I die cut those peekaboo drawers and you can see they have a little scored line. So these are going to flip open to reveal items behind it. This also helps making sure that I have my cardstock placed correctly when I want to go. You can flip them up or flip them down. And now to stamp this, I'm using my Misty stamping tool and I put in a Misty corner just to give me some room on the bottom and on the left hand side there. And I'm lining up that peekaboo drawers stamp image with that cardstock. So once I have that lined up pretty well, I'm going to go ahead and prep that with an anti-static powder tool because I'm going to be doing some heat embossing. And I did do this before where I had stamped it first and die cut, but I just, I really had a hard time lining up the lines from the stamp set with what was die cut. So I found this easier for me personally. So I went ahead and used the embossing ink, inked up my stamp set, and then just gave that some good pressure to apply that to the black cardstock. Then I'm sprinkling on some gold embossing powder. And this is a little tricky because you don't really have a lot of room to hold the cardstock. I kind of have, I'm holding it in one of the openings on one of the drawers. And then I can go ahead and hit that with my heat tool until that's really nice and melted. And I loved the gold on this. It just really popped against that black cardstock. So here is a look at what we have so far and our drawers kind of pop open. And now this next part is where it gets a little bit of work intensive, but I thought it was totally worth it. And I'm going to stamp handles on each of these spots. This reminded me of like those old library. Uh, I can't even think what the, I can't even think what they were called, but the, the file system uh, where you had to dig in the, the card file system. Sorry, the mind is, I can't remember the word, but you know, back in school when you had to go look for a book and you didn't have the convenience of a computer, uh, this is what it reminded me of. So I thought it was really cool. And on the stamp set are a few different handles. There are some labels on there. So just using some clear blocks, which I thought it was just a lot faster, I stamped those in the embossing ink and then went through and stamped them into the areas that they fit. Some of them were just uh, cutting it close, but I got most of them to fit. You could put images here. You could put sentiments here. I had just really loved the look of the whole thing covered in those labels and those handles. So once, you know, I went through, I stamped some, I heat embossed, and then I always prepped it with the anti-static powder tool in between all of that. So just finishing up some of those smaller areas, stamping those down. Like I said, it, it did take a little while, but I thought it was totally worth it. Even added just a little keyhole in there. And then heat setting that. So here is a look at the front panel. This is going to be the front of our card. And I'm actually going to use this as a guide for our next step. So this is a panel I had created using the same ink blending that I had done in my previous card. So the key lime fizz and the blue raspberry. I'm going to put that in my misty tool and using that embossed panel as a guide, I'm going to start lining up images that will fit behind those doors. So on the kit, there are a ton of small images. I kind of want to keep mine more Halloween based, but there are, are fall ones in there, uh, more kind of sentimental ones. I I think there's a, a type of love you one, but I really wanted to keep the Halloween theme. So I went through and just figured out where to place everything. That's why I'm using this as a guide. So I knew where to place it. And I'm also bringing in some stamp sets from uh, IC Crafting and the uh, Pure Magic and just adding in all of those images. Then once I have that placed, I removed that black cardstock, and I'm stamping in VersaFine ink right on top of my ink blended panel. Now there are a few opening spots. You could leave those open. Um, I actually wanted to reuse some of the images, so I'm just placing 
my front panel back on top, kind of figuring out exactly which space I need to stamp in, and then lining the images back up on there. I think I did leave one empty space, uh, but for the most part, I covered in all of the drawers. So that way, when they lift up the flap, they're going to see some creepy Halloween image in there. So just adding a couple more of those. And then I can start working on attaching my front panel. So to do this, I'm actually just going to use some liquid glue. And it does actually help a little bit better if you kind of pop those drawers open a little bit. That would help you see your lines a little bit better. But taking the liquid glue, I just went around all of those lines in between. You want to make sure you're not gluing down any of your drawers. And then just lining that up with my ink blended panel, pushing that down really well. And then I do go through and I'm popping all of those up for one so that you can see what's underneath and two to make sure that I didn't glue any of those down. So here they are all popped up in just that gorgeous glow in the background. I really loved that color combination for this Halloween card. You could use purples, you can use whatever color you would like on those, but these colors in the reactive ink were just amazing and I love those labels and drawer handles on the front. And then if you want to attach a sentiment, I'm just going to glue this to an A2 size folding note card and I can write my sentiment in the inside. So I hope you enjoyed today's inspiration using the My Monthly Hero Kit from Hero Arts. All of the supplies will be listed down below in my video description and also on my blog as well. Thanks for stopping by and I will see you next time.